Democracies have a lot of restrictions, but that's not gonna stop me from doing the impossible, a world conquest. UK historical Iron Man. Before we break democracy, let's do the setup. Army, everything except for the good infantry division can get deleted, and these divisions are gonna be sent to Plymouth. Planes, are merge it all up, same with the navy. We're also gonna go and request our puppet divisions, and those can join our main army over in the UK. Research, we're gonna do a little bit of industry, and these two other researchers are also gonna go on artillery and infantry equipment. Once again, we're gonna be doing a few early wars, so these are gonna help us out a lot, right? Construction, mills only. Why build sieves when you can just steal other people's sieves. <laughs> Production, two on artillery, everything else on guns. We are going to need a lot of guns for what we're gonna pull off. Focuses, we are not actually gonna take a focus. We need that political power. <laughs> Five speed, Go. All right, here comes the first part of breaking democracy. As the UK, we are the head of the London Naval Treaty because, you know, London is in the UK. <laughs> As the head of the treaty, I get to set the terms. Basically, nobody is allowed to have more capsule ships than I do. And right now, we have an absolutely massive navy, which means that everybody is abiding by the terms. But if I take my capsule ships and destroy them, suddenly everybody has more capsule ships than me and are all violating the treaty. Which unlocks all of these decisions over here, which lets us send a uh, warning to countries. The first country we're going to send a warning to is Spain. And there we go, Spain commits to disarmament. Basically, this means that Spain has 60 days to also destroy their ships. If they don't, then uh, we get a war goal. That's right, a war goal. <laughs> and the AI never destroys their ships, so basically this lets us justify on countries as a democracy. <laughs> well, if we're going to war, let's plan our naval invasion. Let's set the remainder of our navy to go on naval invasion support. Don't worry, our navy is still more than strong enough. Okay, Spain has now failed to also blow up their navy, which means that we get a war goal. But not only do we get a war goal, every other naval treaty signatory also gets a war goal. So we gotta do this fast before everyone else steals Spain as well. I mean, Spain's not exactly strong in the 1930s. <laughs> Spain defeated with very minimal casualties, France didn't even get a chance to join the war, so we get everything. And with that, world tension has gone up to 30%, which means that we can now guarantee nations. So what I'm gonna do is send a warning to Brazil, and then immediately guarantee Brazil. You will see why soon. Unfortunately, the naval treaty trick does not work for the entire game. As soon as there is a major war, the naval treaty is removed, so I'm gonna use this opportunity to justify on as many countries as possible. So Argentina, Finland, and we're also gonna do Chile. In the meantime, all of our puppet divisions can go and hold this southern border with France, and our main divisions can go back to the UK. Brazil has failed to blow up its navy, which means that we have a war goal. But remember when I said that we're not the only ones who get a war goal? Well, France just declared war on Brazil, and uh, we guaranteed Brazil, which means that if I accept this call to arms, we are suddenly at war with France. I, I have broken democracy. <laughs> it's time to do what the British love the most, invading France. France gone as well. I mean, at this point, France is destroyed in government, so it's not really that difficult. Annex everything. We are seven months in, and we've literally doubled our size. I know, it's crazy. Don't worry, it's gonna get crazier. Remember, we still have our war goal in Brazil, and you know who else is guaranteeing Brazil? The United States of America. <laughs> Before we take out the US, because right now we don't really have an army, might as well use the opportunity to take out Sweden and Finland and anyone else we have a war goal on. Yeah, this is the reason we needed so many guns, because we have to literally garrison the entire French and Spanish Empire, so we are going to need a lot of equipment. That also reminds me, let's put our occupation law on local autonomy. That's right, we're literally democratic. We can use the democratic occupation law. This feels so wrong. And by the way, the war goals from the Naval Treaty actually all last two years, so uh, I'm not in a hurry at all. And we can already literally go to partial mobilization because world tension is like 2 billion percent. <laughs> uh, yeah, appeasement? I don't think so. I'm also gonna make an intelligence agency because if I don't do it now, I will literally be playing until 1970. Oh. And our spies can go all the way across the world 
to Bhutan. This is the country we did a world conquest with last time, and it was pain. And after we get an intel network, we're gonna boost democracy support. Why are we doing that? You will see. Sweden gone, and Finland gone. We're pretty much ready for war with the US, so let's send our troops over here. I'm, I'm gonna use our puppet divisions to hold the main border. Meanwhile, our good divisions are gonna push through the east. I don't really wanna fight on this huge front line. I don't know what's more cursed, the fact that we annexed France within six months as democratic UK, or the fact that Neville Chamberlain has an aggressive foreign policy. As symbolic of the desire of our two peoples never to go to war with one another again. <laughs> Germany, Anschluss is Austria. Well, I Anschluss France, Spain, Sweden, and Finland. Get on my level, Germany. <laughs> to declare on the US, let's go over here to Brazil. We can declare on them. They have the American guarantee, and that's gonna pull the Americans in. Early game America is weak enough, and uh, they're facing off against the UK that basically just annexed half the world, so <laughs> they're not gonna stand a chance. Britannia, Britannia. First week of the war, we've taken 2,000 casualties. America has taken 43,000. <laughs> At this point, any normal person would go for a change in course and uh, finish the world conquest by 1940, but we gotta go democratic. This pains me to do, but we have to stay democratic. And it's very important that we get global defense, because down here there are some very important focuses. I don't think we're even fighting across America anymore, we're just walking across America. They don't even have an army anymore. And gone. Declaration of Independence destroyed. We still gotta deal with Brazil though, that's quite annoying. The problem with countries with only one state like Bhutan is I can't actually stage a coup since you need multiple states, so I have to flip them with the traditional method of making their democracy support 60%, which is gonna take forever. Oh no. <laughs> Germany is doing its usual expanding across Europe, and I've guaranteed Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg, I don't care, Germany, you can take them, so we don't have to fight them. But I've noticed that if they annex Belgium, they do weird stuff with the Congo, like liberating Zaire and Rwanda or whatever. I don't want five extra countries to fight. I've already got enough, so I've guaranteed Belgium. A few moments later. Germany is declared on the Benelux, so I've joined the war on Belgium side. This should not really be a challenge. Usually, Germany is a pain to fight, but I mean, we have like 400 factions. <laughs> we're producing insane tanks, we're producing planes. As soon as we shred through Germany's air force, our tanks are gonna roll right across them. These German offenses are costing them a lot of casualties. Once our tanks are out, we counterattack. All right, I broke through the Netherlands. These divisions are pretty much trapped. Let's try for an offensive in Northern Germany. And yeah, these tanks are insane. They're just going right through. We have so much production. I basically designed the perfect tank and yeah, it's, it's going through their lines like a knife through butter. Oh my goodness. Let's start getting these German pockets. Well, we've pretty much shredded the uh, German Air Force down to 1,000 planes, so we shot down like 5,000 of them. The war in the air is also won. Uh, <laughs> it's just encirclement after encirclement after encirclement. Freaking finally, Bhutan flipped democratic. That literally took four years. If I keep going at this rate, yeah, I don't think my computer's even gonna survive until the end. Berlin falls, and we're pretty much done. Let's push for this mountain gap in Switzerland. And we made it, which means that literally half the German army is now encircled. Oh, <laughs> this is one giant pocket. If this isn't the correct way to play democracy in Hoi 4, I, I don't know what is. 6.2 million casualties, and we've not even taken half a million. <laughs> what are these ratios? The tanks roll into Italy from the other side, and we're done. We got majority of the war score, so we got pretty much everything. I mean, Belgium did like some disgusting thing to Hungary, but it's fine. We're gonna go to war with Belgium anyway. Before we do that, the next target is gonna be Soviet Union. They have a massive army, but we have like some insane tanks, so it doesn't even matter. Japan's declared on us because of course they did, so I'm gonna send our navy over there just so we can hold Hold on to some islands so I can use them for naval invasions. Okay, there we go. No further appeasement done. This basically allows us to now justify on countries with the same ideology. However, we still cannot justify war goals unless countries have generated world tension. So you might be wondering how I plan on conquering the world. Well, you see, right now I'm at war with the Soviets. If I go over here and call Belgium in, that actually counts as Belgium generating world tension. You see where I'm going with this? We kicked them from the faction and now we can justify on Belgium. It's broken. So let's just kick a bunch of nations and justify on them. Let's justify on Denmark, justify on Yugoslavia. <laughs> this is how we're gonna conquer the world. And this is also why I've been flipping nations democratic, because we need them to be democratic to invite them to our faction. Only a lunatic invades the Soviet Union in February, but uh, I think we've already established that I'm a lunatic by the fact that I'm literally democratic right now. <laughs> Gigantic Soviet pocket. Oh boy, that is a lot of divisions. Okay, first democratically declared war. Belgium, goodbye. 
why. And let's annex everything. Next, we declare on Yugoslavia. Go. And we got a few war goals on Iran and Iraq through the uh, secure oil imports focus, so uh, might as well use them. Let's go. Oh, lag spike. There goes the Soviets. We've now conquered 67% of the world, which, considering we're a democracy, uh, <laughs> that's pretty damn good. I declared on Greece and they joined the United Front because, of course, they did. I mean, it's free war goal on China, so I'll take it. Basically, we're following a routine where we invite two countries, call them in, kick them, justify on them, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. This is honestly going to take so long. There's still so many countries left. The British Isles have been united under a democratic government. What? <laughs> I got so bored, I literally just built a supply line in the middle of the Gobi Desert. So now we just have infinite supply. <laughs> Goodbye, Panama, and the next people we're kicking out is Mexico and Colombia. It's already 1946, we're up to nearly 70% of the world, not counting all of our subjects, so, uh, yeah. We're, we're getting there, but it's gonna take a long time. We still got a coup to bed in Afghanistan and Saudi Arabia, and <laughs> I'm honestly about to cry. <laughs> We annex the British Raj, and we become so powerful that even Bhutan, who has neutral foreign policy, would like to join our faction. Okay, welcome to the faction. It's not like I'm gonna backstab you, right? Naval invasion of Japan. It's been too long. Let's finish the last major, get this over with. Obviously, not a match for our insane amount of cast and also our tanks. <laughs> Goodbye, Tokyo. Wait, we actually have the majority of the war score, not China? <laughs> okay, sure. Peace. The borders are disgusting, but we are at war with China, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna put my tanks on on the Chinese border, but not capitulate them. The reason being, I need to actually call my allies into a war so I can justify on them, so I'm just gonna keep this war going so I can use this as a tool to conquer the rest of the world. By the way, we're now at 84% of the world conquered. It's already 1948, like, again, the only reason it takes so long is because I have to flip all these tiny-ass countries by force. I swear to god, after this video, I'm never touching spies again. I'm literally gonna get PTSD from this. <laughs> these spies get caught, like, every two seconds. I've sp I spent the last two hours busting spies out of jail like the matrix has attacked me and with the power of editing, it is now 1971. Since we've done all our justifications, I've ended the war with China. Just one country left, Iceland, who by the way doesn't even have an army. <laughs> I spent the last 25 years flipping or cooing every single frickin' nation in South and Central America and also the Middle East. It was pain. And done. 100% of the world conquered as a democracy. Wait, what's that noise? Wait, is that my PC? No!